Here's a circular motion problem you may have experienced before. It's an amusement park ride called the rotor. It's a cylinder that spins about a vertical axis and the riders lean against the wall and uh, while the ride is spinning the floor drops out and they appear to be stuck to the wall. Here's a still image of a rotor in action. And so what we want to do is figure out what is the minimum coefficient of friction so the riders don't slip if we have a rotor spinning at four radians per second and a radius of three and a half meters. Those are typical sort of values for this sort of ride. So let's look at a sketch of the rotor. So again, you can see a cylinder spinning about a vertical axis. Here's the rider after the floor has dropped. And so we want to draw a free body diagram of the rider. And so we have weight acting straight down and it's static friction that's holding them up if they're not slipping. And then this would be a normal force, the force of the cylinder wall on the person uh, that is uh, pointing toward the center, which is horizontal in this case. And we need a coordinate system and we put one axis in the direction of the acceleration, which again is toward the center, which is to the right in this uh, problem where we drew the figure. If we drew the figure over here, then the acceleration would be toward the left, but always toward the center. So let's look in the y direction. There's no acceleration in the y direction if the rider is not slipping. And so we have a positive force of static friction up. And then we have weight down, so it's negative. And then there's no acceleration, so those have to add up to zero. And so we know the force of static friction equals the weight. Well, we have another equation for static friction. It's less than or equal to mu uh, times the normal force. This would be mu static here. And since we're asking for the minimum coefficient of friction, we want friction to be its maximum. The force of friction is at its maximum value. And so we can set those two equal. And so we can substitute this into here. So now we have mu times the normal force equals the weight. Well, we haven't looked in the x direction. So the sum of the forces in the x equals ma. And this is a centripetal acceleration. And so we have an equation for centripetal acceleration. Uh, centripetal acceleration a sub c is the linear speed squared over the radius. But here we're given the angular speed. So there's a way to write this in angular form. Uh, the linear speed is the angular speed times the radius. So I can substitute that into there and square it and I'm left with the centripetal acceleration as omega squared over r. So I'm going to substitute that into there. And the sum of the forces in the x direction, well, there's only one, just the normal force, all in the positive x. So my x equation becomes the normal force is the mass times omega squared r. And so over here, I have normal force. So I could solve this for n and put it into here. Or Solve this for n. Well, it's already solved for n, so let's do it that way. And so let's put that into there. And so now we have mu m omega squared r equals mg. And you can see the mass cancels out. That's good. So all the riders will have roughly, anyway, the same answer. Their clothing affects their coefficient of friction. So if you do watch a ride like this, uh, as it slows down, you'll see people slip down at different times, but very close to being about the same angular speed. And so now we can solve for mu, and so it becomes g over omega squared r, and we put in our numbers, uh, and if you look at the units here, we get the meters going, and then there's seconds squared going, and we're left with no units. Remember, radians are dimensionless, and so the coefficient of friction is dimensionless, no units here. So that's a good sign, and so we got 0.18. Um, how about this? What if we had a 70 kilogram rider? We know friction equals the weight from up here. And so it would equal 686 newtons. What if we spun the rotor faster at six radians per second? What would happen to the force of friction? And so see if you can figure that out. Pause the video. Here comes the answer. Okay, we're back. And so it's still 686 newtons. Remember, the force of static friction is only as big as it needs to be. 
And so it's never going to be greater than the weight for a problem like this. Static friction is not going to force the rider to go up. Uh, you can see some people scooch themselves up uh, on their own, but static friction by itself won't uh, do that for a rider just leaning against the wall. So hope you enjoyed this one. Go out and find a rotor and ride it and know the physics.